So Eric DaCosta, who I think there were a lot of people who didn't even see this one coming, uh, he had a uh, sort of mini press conference today uh, live from the Combine. It was very hard to hear all the questions that were being asked. I could hear his answers clearly, but couldn't really hear the questions. But anyway, uh, he had a presser today, and he talked about several different things. Of course, the one that everybody's been talking about, uh, everybody's been thinking about Lamar Jackson's contract. What is the status of his contract? What's going on? Have you all talked? Is, is, is it going to happen? And Eric DeCosta said the same thing he said last time. He said, hey, we're going at Lamar's pace. We're going at his urgency. And he said that Lamar knows how to find me, and I know how to find him. Uh, he did say that they've talked recently about it. But um, as we can see, there clearly has not been a contract that has been agreed upon or signed. Um, and to me personally, that's no surprise. I do not think that it's going to happen this off season at all. If it does happen this off season, I will be shocked. I'll be shocked. Um, but again, it's important to just, just watch out for stuff. I, I want y'all to watch out for stuff, watch out for different reports that come out about Lamar Jackson, especially when it comes to him not having an agent, because so many people feel like, oh, these re these reports, they come from agents and they could come from agents. But also a lot of the time, a lot of these reports, they can come from the team because the team may feel a certain way and they don't want to just come out and flat out say it so they can go talk to a reporter or something and be like, hey, drop that. Say, say that. Put that out there. Because public perception, it's not everything, but it does have a huge impact. So just look out for stuff like that, just to give y'all a little heads up. Um, but anyway, he did talk about how he envisions Lamar Jackson uh, being a part of the Ravens three, four years from now and them having won a Super Bowl or multiple Super Bowls. And that would be a beautiful thing. But... It's, it's going to take a lot to actually get it done. Now, um, he talked about some different rookies that are coming out uh, about the draft class. And one of the things that he said that they look for is if the guy has a chance to really put the team on his back and make the organization that he's playing for better than they were before. So when it comes to drafting a player, does this can this player make us better? Uh, he said that the O-line is strong in this draft class. The uh, edge guys outside linebackers that they're strong and cornerback is very strong. Then he switched gears and he talked about J.K. Gus and Justice Hill. He said that uh, he's looking forward to all of them coming back stronger than ever. And yes, we certainly are. And he said that him and J.K. Dobbins are actually, they were neighbors. I didn't know that. So since J.K. Dobbins is a neighbor of Eric DaCosta, that means J.K. Dobbins ain't never going anywhere. Shout out to John Harbaugh. Anyway, he said with Rashad Bateman. That uh, he had made great progress through the season. And yeah, we did see that. Uh, and then with Rashad Bateman, it was so crazy that, like, at his first game, like, you, he was ready. He was ready, and it was like, okay, <laughs> let's go, Bate. Like, so this guy, he's he going to be something, man. Rashad Bateman is going to be something. But anyway, uh, Eric DeCosta said that Rashad Bateman is a great route runner and has really good hands. Uh, he said that uh, as far as with Lamar Jackson, when he was coming out of the draft, uh, he said they really studied Lamar and they, they tried to keep their interest on him very, very quiet. And they did a pretty good job of that. I mean, we had heard that they uh, they had visited with Lamar and um, then, then that's when they had signed uh, RG. It's just the way that they did it. Well, no, that, that's when they tried to sign RG3. They tried to sign him. Um, so they had given us like these signs that they were looking to go into a different direction. Oh, yeah. Then they tried to sign Kaepernick, too. So they let us know without letting us know, like, all right, we, we're trying to go into sort of a, a different direction at quarterback without actually coming out and saying it. Uh, but, yeah, they said that they try to keep their interest on them super quiet. Uh, and he said this. is I love this part. He said it's very important not to be swayed by public opinion or the media. You have to have conviction in a player. So if the media is saying all this and all that about certain players, uh, it's important that you know that player, you've watched film and tape on that player, you know what that player can do for your team. Now, with Eric DaCosta saying that, I also feel like as fans, it's just as important 
to go by that same thing, to not be swayed by public opinion or media when it comes to players. Because the media, they can twist a lot of stuff, as you all have seen before plenty of times. So just a little heads up. Uh, he said a few years ago, when it came to Lamar Jackson, he was very different from a lot of other quarterbacks. Um, but in now he said there are a lot more mobile type QBs in the league. Uh, he talked about the pipeline. Uh, this is one of our favorite discussions. Um, he talked about the pipeline that helps you get accurate information on different players. And now uh, an example that he gave was like with Ozzie Newsom, with his connects with Alabama, how he was plugged in with Alabama. So that helps them with all these Alabama players that they would draft. Um, and then he brought up John Harbaugh and Jim Harbaugh, the obviously brothers, so they kind of close. Uh, but he brought up how that's helped them with players that come from Michigan. Uh, so I know a lot of people feel like that's a, some people feel like it's a great thing. Some people feel like it's a not so great thing. Um, now, this next part, so I had to, had to really sit down for this one. I appreciated it because it is very true. Um, he said that if we think we can win a Super Bowl like we did in 2000, the game has changed. So, you know, the 2000, that Ravens defense was everything and more. One of the best defenses, obviously not just that year, but really of all time. Uh, but the, the game, you simply, you can't win like that anymore. But he did say the, the passing game is more important now than ever. But... You still have to play excellent defense and great special teams. Uh, he talked about how it's a QB-driven league, but it can't just be the quarterback. Again, listen to the wording that he was saying. And again, watch the presser for yourself, too. Don't just take my word for it or what I'm saying. Listen to it for yourself so you can have your own interpretation of it and whatnot and what you took away from it. Please listen to it for yourself. Uh, but he said you have to have great pieces around the quarterback as well. So it can't just be all the quarterback. You got to build around him. So we'll see how that goes this offseason. Um, he said that he talked to Calais Campbell. And he, he sounded like, again, Eric DaCosta, Mr. Poker Face. But he, when he talked about Calais Campbell, it sounded like he was in the dark. It sounded like he ain't watched the video that we did where Calais Campbell came out and said, oh, yeah, no, I'm playing this year. Um, he he sounded like Calais Campbell been egging him or something. Like Calais Campbell ain't been responding to his texts. Uh, because he said he told Calais, like, hey, if you want to play, like, hit me up. Let me know. Let me know. Because I, I want you to play. I want you. I want to bring you back. Just let me know. But the, the way he said, said it made it sound like Calais has not let him know. But we'll see. Um, he talked about with cornerbacks, the great corners, that they can catch. They can make interceptions. They can even score. Uh, and they just make game-changing plays. And that's true. The great cornerbacks are known for that. Well, some great cornerbacks, they're known for just knocking the ball. They ain't really known for catching like that. But a lot of great cornerbacks saw. But great point, Eric DaCosta. Um, back to Lamar Jackson when he was coming out of Louisville. Uh, they said that their scouts thought that Lamar Jackson was a very unorthodox player. Um, and that he was not a traditional quarterback. Uh, and he said that they were very thankful that James Urban was in the building and that James Urban had been around Michael Vick, so he had experience with the quarterback similar to Lamar Jackson, even though there are a lot of differences between Lamar and Vick. But anyway, uh, he said that that helped him a lot. And then he mentioned Greg Roman. He brought up Greg Roman. He said Greg Roman had always been a coordinator that could scheme up the running game very well. Again, didn't mention anything about the passing game. At all. Just said that he could scheme up the running game very well. And that was interesting. Um, and I know they, they were talking about running and whatnot, running out of all these different formations and the exotic runs and all that stuff. Um, you know, we're not even going get to get into that. We could talk about that another time. Uh, but he said that Greg Roman came up with an offense that teams just had never seen before. Uh, but that offense, is, he said, it doesn't last forever because teams, they scheme against you uh, and they study you. And that is very, very true. So... It's important that, that the offense that they once ran, that they evolve, that they move forward, that they progress. So hopefully this year they continue to do that. Now, 
This is where it got a little funny for me. This is where it got a little entertaining when Eric DeCosta was speaking because he said that they met with Evan Neal. Some people think he'll be the number one overall pick in the draft. At, at the latest, number three. But I've seen number one. I've seen number two. But, yeah, he, he going to be one of the top picks in the draft. But he said that they met with Evan Neal, uh, and he was extremely impressive. Said he was strong. He's a great run blocker. So when, when he mentioned his name, I was thinking, all right, even though Ravens obviously not drafting that high, but cross that off the list. Then he said, oh, Charles Cross is an outstanding athlete. And I was thinking, oh, Charles Cross? Okay. Cross him off the list, too. And then he said, Tyler Lindenbaum, the center from Iowa, said they've had great luck with players from Iowa like Marsha Yonder. Cross him off the list, too. I, if Eric DaCosta comes out and says a, a player's name, like, specifically, yeah, take him off. He trying to build their value up so other teams can take those guys so he can get who he really wants. But that again, just my opinion though. Could be wrong. We'll see. We'll see in about uh a month or about two months, really. Wow, it's already March. That's crazy. February flu. Even though it's super short, but it still flu. Uh, he said teams picking in the top 15 have a great chance to get some really good offensive linemen. So they go Eric DaCosta trying to boost them offensive linemen stock even higher. So whenever, whenever he does pick, if it's at 14 or if it's later on, because I don't think it's going to be early on, you never know, but you kind of know. But anyway, um, whenever he picks, again, he's he trying to push them offensive linemen to the front. So, <laughs> hey, take those guys, take that guy, take that. I got who I really want. Who that is, hey, we'll see. But it's going to be fun uh, trying to figure it out along the way. And, of course, uh, free agency will be a big part of that because free agency, depending on what they do and depending on what they don't do in free agency, that can tell a lot of the story uh, when it comes to uh, the way that they'll draft. Because in free agency, you want to try to knock as much out as with the roster that you possibly can. Uh, and then with the draft, you try to add to that. So you really can do best player available. But even if you go best play available, you still got to mix in need in there as well. So anyway, uh, it was fun. This was a fun listen. Like I said, make sure if you haven't watched it already, listen to it for yourself uh, so you can see exactly how you feel about what was said. I love y'all team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. This is a busy week. We out.